Today, we're talking about a few of the Besson euphoniums that I was able to play at the Buffet Crampon Warehouse in Jacksonville, Florida. Stay tuned. <laughs> What's going on guys, Aaron here, helping musicians get better, faster through performances, educational videos, and product reviews. And today, we're talking about a few of the Besson euphoniums that I got to play while I was hanging out in the Buffet Crampon Warehouse in Jacksonville. Now, before going forward, I do wanna mention that I am an artist for Besson and I play exclusively on Besson euphoniums. I felt that it was important for me to disclose that at the beginning of this video, just so you know that um, I am an artist for the company and these are my opinions on the instruments, but I wanted to be upfront and forward with you. However, let it be known also that Besson and Buffet did not pay for me to say anything. I'm not getting a check to give these opinions. Um, I just had the opportunity to play a bunch of their instruments and I wanted to share. Now some of the folks up in Jacksonville invited me to come up and meet everybody and play some horns um, while I was up at the warehouse and I was able to get some footage of me playing a few of the instruments. Now these aren't very in-depth reviews. I just picked up the instrument, um, didn't even pull out any slides and started playing. Um, so this is pure out of the box me playing these instruments. Before we get into any specific horns, I wanna talk about some broad things that I really like that Besson does with all of their euphoniums. And the biggest thing that I really like that Besson does with every single euphonium that they create is everything has a large bore. From the three valve new standard 162 euphonium all the way up to the Besson Prestiges, everything is a large bore instrument. So if you start as a beginner and go all the way to the professional models, you're gonna sit with the same airstream going through that large bore, which I like a lot, not only as a player, but also as an educator. One of the things I, I found out that I also really like about what Besson does is when they ship the instrument from uh, overseas over to the United States, in Jacksonville, they actually open it back up and they'll play test it again and repolish it and all that kind of stuff and make sure it's in working order um, so that it, just in case anything happened, you don't get a bum horn, which I like that there's that quality and that attention there. And another thing that I like that's not just a Besson brass instrument thing, but all of the brass brands in the Buffet Crampon group, they provide you with really solid, nice cases, which is, I know it doesn't sound like a big deal in the overhaul, but I mean, just having one solid, nice, hard case that you can keep your instrument in, even if you plan to use a gig bag most of the time, it's, it's very handy to have. Another thing I wanna add here is from the beginning to the end, all of the Besson instruments have a spit catcher underneath the valves, um, which mostly I just like because it saves my pants. <laughs> Um, nothing's gonna drip out, you know, all the oils, all your, all your uh, water, all that kind of stuff. It's gonna stay in this nice little easy to remove tube. It, it's very appreciated. All right, but first let's get into it with the Besson New Standard 162 Euphonium. What's going on guys? Spending a little time here in the warehouse, checking out all the different horns. And the first one I'm gonna check out is the New Standard BE162. This is a three valve student model. Now, what I liked about this thing, again, I like the large bore. I love how light it was. It was really easy to hold up and to carry. Everything felt good, but it just felt like a non-compensating three valve version of my prestige. And this goes along with their theme of from the beginning to the end, all of their instruments feel and play extremely similar. It's a really big sound and if you're looking for a three valve option either if you're a beginner or you want a, a lighter horn for like parades or something like that, this is a great way to go. And I do wanna add that I did a review of the 165, which is a four valve version of the 162. It's just the next model up, which a lot of my students have started purchasing. And if you wanna hear how that horn sounds and my thoughts about that instrument, go and check that out as well. The next horn I got to play was a lacquer version of the Besson 967, the Besson Sovereign. Get to hang out with 
Samsung Star. This is a lacquer model. This is the E967. E Bighorn, um, very similar to like the Prestige or anything, just price points a little bit lower, a little bit fewer the, uh, okay. the bells and whistles and all that kind of stuff, but still a very solid horn. I've got a lot of students who play this thing. The Besson Sovereign plays so well. It's got a free lead pipe, which is a really interesting feel in terms of the way when you're playing. Um, it's got a big bell. It's got a big body. It feels um, very similar to the Prestige, but still a little bit different. It's got a little bit of a different sound profile. This to me, it sounds like the classic if you go and listen to the brass band recordings from like the 90s. Um, or the 80s, or if you listen to any of the players who played in that, it's that classic euphonium sound um, that a lot of people still like and play with today. This instrument has been in the game for such a long time and so many people play it, um, and I, I, I can completely understand why. And when I played it, I remembered why, like, oh yeah, I recommend this horn to so many people. I like to recommend this instrument for a lot of my students who are going on to be either music education majors, or they just want to be music minors, or they're thinking about possibly being in like a community brass band or band for the rest of their career. This is a solid horn that you could play for your entire career and it's going to sound great the entire time. It's very durable, it's very sturdy, and it's, it's been a standard in the industry for a very long time. And then of course, you know I had to mess around with a BE2052, the best in prestige. Now, many of you know, or some of you have asked me in the past before, you know, what horn am I playing on? I actually play on a Best and Prestige myself, but I actually play on the smaller bell version. I play on a 2051. And the biggest difference, I had, I originally purchased a 2052 and then I actually lost that instrument in a house fire and then moved to the 2051 with my second instrument. And what I'm about to talk about is really splitting hairs and the differences between the two. But the 2052 can create a bigger, big, darker sound because we're adding that extra weight and also the extra thickness of the bell. So it can get a really dark sound. But with the 2051, I, can, I feel like I can control my tone a little bit more, which is very helpful since I play chamber playing, wind band playing, and brass band playing, as well as solo playing. Because I'm doing so many different things, it's a, I can weave in and out of those sound profiles a little easier. But again, I'm really splitting hairs. The Prestige, especially the 2052, is the horn that a lot of soloists are playing right now. And, but of course, the 2052 sounds great. It was a, such a big sound and it was just, it took everything I gave it and it responded so well. Intonation right out of the box was phenomenal. Uh, the, it's, there's a reason why this is, this is the top of the line. This is the go-to. This is why so many soloists play this instrument. But yeah, guys, those are some of my quickie thoughts on some of these instruments. Um, not a huge in-depth review to any of these, but um, depending on your situation, there's a Besson horn for what you're doing. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think about some of these instruments. What are your thoughts? Do you have any other questions about any of these horns? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you could, hit that subscribe button so we can get these videos directly into your feed right as they come out. Yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. My name's Aaron reminding you to be happy but never satisfied.